Hello and welcome to the Voices of the Vic podcast with me, Mike Duffy and Ben Ayton. Ben, it's the end of season awards, the Voices of the Vic end of season awards. How are you doing, bud? Yeah, doing really well, mate. Been up early today, haven't we? Um, We've just let the cat out the bag on our social medias. We've just interviewed Chris Stark from BBC Radio 1, Bat Peter Crouch podcast, a massive Watford fan. It was an absolute pleasure to speak to him, everything Watford. What a bloke. Um, he definitely knows his stuff about Watford. And it's it's good to get an insight from him because obviously he knows players like Will Hughes and Scott Duxbury. So it's it's nice to see that kind of side of it as well from what mm. fans don't really know or see. So really interesting interview. And I'm excited for people to listen to it or watch it because we've actually done the visual for it again, haven't we, Mike? This is our second, third time we've done the visual. So, yeah, I'm really excited about it, mate. How yeah, are you? He, he, he... Just to off the back of what you're saying there, he was absolutely superb. Sometimes it's hard to forget that he's actually a Watford fan, and he those views come across to us. Like he wasn't just a Radio One DJ, or he wasn't just a, a one third of the Peter Crouch podcast. We were just chatting as if we were in the poor bloke, you know. So, yeah. and I think that that's what's really really good. So, like yourself, I cannot wait for um, for that to be released. Um, yeah, all good from my side. Uh, aching slightly this morning. It's Thursday, the 13th of May, as we record this. Uh, I'm actually uh, in Birmingham. So I played a friendly last night for my um, for my new Saturday team, which is starting next season. So I'm aching a bit. Uh, I'm playing five-a-side on Friday, and then I go home back to Nottinghamshire on Saturday, and then playing 11-a-side again on Sunday morning. So, wow. yeah, I'm going to be exhausted. Come, come Busy Monday week off morning. work for you, wasn't it? Sunny like that, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> just to let the, the listeners know, whether you're watching the podcast on YouTube or whether you're listening on your favourite podcast provider, uh, we are hoping that James from the Watford Way is going to be joining us. Um, he's had a power cut. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure what's what's going off there. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm buying that excuse, to be honest, as well. But, uh, no, hopefully he will join partway through the, the podcast and uh, we can get his views on some stuff. But, Ben, as I said, you know, it is the, the end of season awards. Uh, we, it's it's going to be similar to, to our Christmas special podcast, if anyone remembers that. Uh, and we're going to break it down into categories. You, you may have seen on social media that we... Um, that we put out some tweets asking people for their thoughts on different categories. So we're going to be telling you, we're going to be telling you who's won which category based on your guys' votes. Uh, and also we're going to give our view as well, because you may have noticed myself and Ben didn't actually reply because uh, we're saving our reactions for now. Um, just a bit of, of news which uh, broke this morning, which I, I wanted to mention before we start. Unfortunately, um, it, it was announced on Watford Twitter that former Watford player uh, Dixie Hale uh, passed away um, either today or, or last night. And he was an Irish midfielder who played 113 times for, for Watford and was part of Ken Furphy's 1968-69 history-making promotion winners. So our thoughts are with his family and friends. Um, so that that's uh, unfortunately a bit of sad news to bring you. But um, steering back in the direction of the the end of season awards, as I said, we're going to break it down into categories. The first category, Ben, that we're going to talk about is performance of the season. Now, we asked the listeners and we wanted to know what they thought was our performance in the season. And to be fair, Ben, before I read through some of the responses and tell the winner... There was some decent, you know, there was some game, a good lot of games to pick from, wasn't there? We, we were spoiled for choice. Yeah, we were. We've had about four or five different um, selections. It was, I think it was tougher than you thought it would be. Um, there was lots of standout performances in a season, just like the actual Watford FC Player of the Season awards. It's like normally you have one standout player and you're like, yeah, nailed on, he's going to get it. But there's been so many, like from from our uh, goalkeeper or two goalkeepers to the defence, midfield attacks, could be anyone, absolutely everyone put out a, a incredible performance to maybe win individual performance of the season. So it's interesting to see who the fans and the voice of the Vic podcast listeners have actually voted for because, yeah, it was a tough category. It was, it was indeed. Um, so just to go through, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll tell you who 
who has won, according to the Voices of the Vic listeners' reaction for performance of the season. Norwich away, it won't be a surprise to uh, to, to see that that won the votes with 11 votes um, out of all the responses. Um, so Cameron Smart said Norwich away or Bristol City at home can't decide. Um, again, two, obviously, Bristol City was that kickstart for, uh, for Watford. Uh, Michael Goddard said Norwich away or Bristol at home. Uh, Nick DA said Norwich away. Jason Fark said Norwich away. Mike Smart said an original answer. It can only be Norwich away. Huge pressure, a response needed, and we absolutely nailed it. Golden Goals one said performance of the season was Norwich away, closely followed by Norwich at home. The team were virtually perfect in both games. The away tips it, though, for importance of the victory. Caroline says Norwich away. Right from the start, they attacked and were positive and determined to come away with the points. Only one, Steve D, said performance of the season has to be Norwich away. So much riding on it, and we literally outplayed them all game. I completely agree on that, by the way. Um, And... Um, Dave Morris also said Norwich away. He'd have taken a point after the, da- the disaster at Kenilworth Road, but to win and in the manner we did was stuff of dreams. Um, and then James Hurst went Watford v Bristol. And then Mikey Abrahams also said Norwich away. Perfect performance in a game we had to get something out of. So Ben, Norwich away, the clear winner there. Your vote, where's it going? I don't think you can look any further than Norwich away. Um, the importance, like the fans have said, the importance of that game. We had to react after that defeat at Luton um, and to turn up at Norwich. And if I remember correctly, they couldn't get out of their own penalty box for the first 20 minutes. We was on it from the first whistle, had so many opportunities to score. I think Gosling had about three chances in that 20 minutes. Um, so, yeah, we was all over them like a rash. We we turned up to perform and, my God, was that a performance we needed? And to hold on to a clean sheet as well, I know it's a tough place to go to, Carroll Road, but we kept Brandia quiet, we kept Pookie quiet, we, we kept Cantway uh, quiet. So, yeah, really good performance and you can see why that's won. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the the I think the, the importance of it as well, Ben, was... As uh, as someone pointed out here, I think it was uh, Dave Morris pointed out, we come in on back of it off a, a loss in our derby, and you know yeah. you could have easily understood it. Well, not easily understood, but you you would have seen that possibly that would have bogged us down a little bit, and we would have been a bit lacklusterous. We lost to our rivals, and then we've got bloody Norwich away to to come. Uh, but the reaction was was superb. So Norwich away had eleven votes from from the the listeners. Uh, and 12 with Ben's, and we're going to make it 13 with mine. It is so hard. I mean, Bristol City's got a, a, a good case to, to be backed as well, because obviously that was the one that started it. But Yeah, I think that was probably the turning point of the season, wasn't yeah. it? It was like, we didn't know if Cisco was going to be there, if we got a defeat, um, the change of formation, formation. So it was the turning point of the season, but it's, it wasn't the performance of the season for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no, I completely agree. If if there was a category for turning point in the season, it would definitely be that. Yeah. Um, so I completely agree. Uh, just before we go on to the next topic, um, I just learned now whilst Ben was talking that unfortunately we won't be joined by James uh, as he's it's been estimated that the power cut is um, the, the power is due to be switched back on around two three p.m. Uh, and it's half <laughs> eleven now. So I don't envisage this podcast going on for three hours, unfortunately, listeners. Uh, but uh, yeah, we 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 thank James for uh, for for agreeing to come on in the first place anyway uh, so it's just going to be myself and Ben um next topic is goal of the season and uh to be fair Ben we've had a few uh we've been sport for choice on this as well uh, so the winners of this uh, the winner of this one is unsurprisingly Messina with five votes but Chalaba was a very close three votes um so you know I think maybe it, it wasn't the delightful well not delightful that's the wrong word maybe it wasn't the technique of Messina's goal but I think it was definitely the the delightfulness that sprung from it and the importance of it is why he's won it um it it was just poor goalkeeping like terrible goalkeeping and you know know. to think he still played the rest of the season I don't know what the goalkeeping situation is like at Cardiff but um are you surprised that 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 Messina winning the, the goal of the season from our listeners Ben? A little bit, only because if it was top bins, and it, 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 I, I wouldn't have any complaints with it, but the keeper kind of like, 
it kind of moved out of the way. It kind of went through him and it was like, I think it's one because of it was a last minute and it was a free kick. And we, we came from behind that day. We was 1-0 down until Chalaba scored. And then Messina with the free kick in like the dying minutes of injury time. So I think that's why it's possibly one. But I think there's been better goals this season. Um, but I can see why the listeners have voted for um, Messina. Yeah, well, I mean, just to, just to give you a taste of the other um, votes, we had Golden Goal said, for me, it was Sars Brace against Reading. The second goal was goal of the season, where he's absolutely thundered it. So surprising that the net didn't completely combust on itself. Um, Mike Smart, again, my old man, said, in terms of the quality of the goal, Chalabert all day long, but for significance at the moment, um, the OMF genus of it, is Messina in the same match. And I think that's just summed up basically what you, we've both just said there in, in terms of uh, significance of the moment. That is probably why Messina's won. Uh, Caroline Messina finally scoring from a free kick in the last few seconds. Cursed, done and dusted. Uh, Cameron Smart went Chalaba versus Cardiff. Uh, Dor- Dorota, I don't know if I've pronounced that right, so if you've not, feel free to, to hammer me for that. Uh, must be Messina's. <laughs> Last kick of the game and broke the curse. I don't remember screaming that loud. Um, yeah, Peter yeah. Smith. And do you know what, Ben? I'm surprised. Probably because of the significance, he's probably has been overlooked. But in terms of sheer quality and, and the technique, Peter Smith, I think he's bang on. Pedro at Derby, he's definitely got something about him. Just hope we, he can de- we can develop him at Watford. Um, and then an unusual uh, vote that we received was from Mikey Abrahams. Isaac's success versus Swansea. Pretty similar to Sars second against Reading, but without being disrespectful, we know Isma has stuff like that in his locker. The success strike sort of came out of nowhere. Completely agree. Brilliant yeah. goal. Um, but yeah, so we've we've had quite a quite a f- array of different you know um, votes and uh, Dave Murray. It's nice to talk about goals we've scored this season because when we were in the Prem, we didn't really score yeah. that many goals, and it was about the goals we conceded. Um, so yeah, it's actually difficult. nice to yeah. look back and reflect on how many goals we've scored and the quality of them as well in this championship we've scored. Um, I totally agree with one of the listeners. For me personally, I, I thought Joe Pedro at Derby was goal of the season. I voted for it on the Watford website because yeah. I just thought for how young he was and to take it on and open up his body and to curl that right into the top corner as well I just thought it was sheer class from the boy and yeah. oh yeah whilst we were on the topic of Joe Pedro he actually signed a brand new contract this morning which has um, been extended to 2027 um, which is like the longest contract I think I've ever seen um, yeah. but I'm, I'm delighted that we've tied him down because this boy is a talent and uh, he can go places Absolutely, completely agree. And, and for those listening that haven't read it, um, we've not offered him a, a six-year deal. It's just a two-year extension on his current deal. Because when I first read it, I was like, bloody hell. Like, the only person I remember getting a six-year deal was Alan Pardew. And to be honest, even thinking about that, that might have been an eight-year deal. I don't know. but was yeah, that Newcastle? It was, yeah. He's, do you know what? He's, I think it's only in the last couple of years that that deal has run out. So he's yeah. only just been stopped getting paid by, by Newcastle. Um, but yeah, um, brilliant news. And like Ben said, hopefully he can develop and we're, hopefully we can reap the benefits of him next season as well. Uh, but uh, so Jao Pedro gets your vote. My vote, which is the same as my vote on the official Watford website, uh, has to be Chalabar, uh, which actually brings the voting close to um, close to Messina. So Messina wins by one vote. Uh, but yeah, Chalabur, the, the quickness of the feet and the fact of we hit back straight away because we just conceded an own goal. Yeah, Was it minutes, Sierra Elta? Sierra Elta? Yeah, Sierra goal? Elta. Yeah. Um, So we went 1-0 down. Cardiff was we're, were on that unbeaten run. They hadn't lost under Mick McCarthy at, the, at that point, at, at the moment in time. And they, I thought, oh, we've gone 1-0 down, right? We, we really need to sort of try and get on the front foot here and then honestly I've never seen feet like it like the quickness and then it was just superb so the technique on that completely agree with your point no Ben Jao Pedro brilliant brilliant goal in front of a hero of his Wayne Rooney which I thought was even better but yeah, um, yeah I, I, I would have to go Chalabra on that but there's there's like you said Ben it is so so nice to have loads in the mix because last season you know if we'd have been doing this um, I, I don't even know. Uh, well, obviously it would have been Danny Welbeck's overhead kick against Norwich, but we wouldn't have been as spoilt for choice. Uh, so it is nice to uh, to to have a bit to choose from. Now, 
And talking of Jao Pedro, now, now there was a little bit of confusion over the next the next category which we had, which was young player of the season. Now, me and Ben were sort of, we, we were seeing the votes come in and we were thinking, what, what does a young footballer, like, where, where does that cut-off line begin? Or, or end, I should say. Uh, we've decided 24 and under, I think is, is fair. Uh, others may disagree, but I, I think for the sake of the voting, I think, that that would be um, that would be the 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 cut off. Now I did say on the tweet, let's mix it up a bit here. If you had to choose your young player of the season, but it couldn't be Saar, because I would imagine Saar would have absolutely you know won this by a country mile. So yeah. the winner was no surprise here is Sierra Elta. He's been absolutely fantastic. Um, Mike Smart, Sierra Elta, incredible player. Um, the somebody said is golden goal said is Sierra Elta class as a young player if so him for sure uh, if not can only be Jao Pedro for his early season promise uh, James Hurst would you allow Sierra Elta so you know that was their first person on their mind before even thinking about anyone else um, a couple of other mentions um, Peter Elson said Pedro um, Caroline said what defines a young player Sierra Elta if he falls into that category if not then Thiago Couture or, again I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly uh, but I think we replied that you know Sierra Elta does, does fall within that um, and then Cameron Smart said João Pedro and then only one Steve D said Young player of the season, I will have to give to Batman. Came in like he had been playing for years and had a huge part in promotion. Um, so, yeah, so, some a real sort of different mix there. Who's getting your vote, Ben? I don't think you can look any further than Francisco Sirielta, really. He's been a man mountain at the back. Mm. Uh, Monster among men, the Chilean Maldini, whatever names have we, we've given him, the brick wall. Um, yeah. You just can't get past him. And for him to hit the ground running, um, I know you've joked about it before when you've done interviews on the WD18 podcast where you've said when he played in a um, cup game, we didn't want him anywhere near the side again. We was like, who's this bloke from Indonesia? He's not coming anywhere near the side again. Get him out. And then Cisco's first game um, against Norwich, Cabaselli was out injured. So obviously we needed a replacement. Sirielta comes in off of out of nowhere and puts in a magnificent performance and he's not looked back as he, he's been fantastic. And for someone his age, I think we forget how old he actually is and the maturity he shows and the calmness on the ball. And I think it, I think a lot of it must go down to true econ as well. The understanding them to have got the partnership they've got, I think they've made each other flourish this season. So yeah, Siri Elta is absolutely outstanding. And he's, he's next on that list with Pedro. He needs to be tied down on a long contract because we need him at this football club. Yeah, completely, completely agree. And like you said, the fact that at the start of the season, I think it was Oxford and then Newport, I was like, no, 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 no. Let's never make sure this man <laughs> ever. And then I think he made the bench under Rivic a couple of times in the league. And I was like, praying. He came you know. the bench against Huddersfield, didn't he, in his last game? Is that the, the disaster at Huddersfield where we lost yeah, 2 he, uh, There was an injury to one of our uh, defenders, so he came off the bench as well. So he actually he, he played in Ivic's last game for Watford. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, the Chileans were right. We we've, we we say that a lot, Ben, but they were right. They absolutely spammed the social media and, you know... Never doubt a Chilean. Honestly, like, the, the craziness, the Chileans for what for now. I mean, I did an interview with a Chilean newspaper. Can Never been able to find it since I did that interview. Never. Uh, I mean, obviously, speaking the national language of Chile probably helps to find it, but I've, I've just never, <laughs> never found that interview. So I, I don't Are you know sure who it was I was a Chilean in. newspaper? <sighs> Well, who knows? Um, I mean, the name of the newspaper, um, if you was to use that word in Arabic, it actually translates in, into a, into an intimate object, let's just say that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's. Uh, I was like, when she sent it, I was like, mm, OK, that sounds sounds a bit suspect, but I'll go with it. Uh, she was asking me about Sierra Elta, so I thought it was. Um, I'm going to have to be boring here. I, I really... I, I'd love to be different than that, but like you just have to look at the impact that he's he's coming. And I think what makes it even better, Ben, is he only got in the team because of injuries. If yeah. Cabaselli didn't get injured, we wouldn't have known about him. No, but, he I mean, would have I mean, rotted on the bench this season, yeah. gone back to Undenese because he didn't get his chance at Watford and we would never have heard of him again. Yeah. But for him to come in from the dark and put in 
that level of performance consistently week in, week out. It, it was Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And he just, I think he only came out of the side once, didn't he? I think, was that maybe like Preston away or something? There was one time he actually came out of the side. But other than that, he, he was a mainstay of that defence. He, he was indeed. And I think as well, the fact that he had to come in and make his debut against... No other well, pretty much, weren't it? Not his, not his debut, but from the start, in terms of starting, his league leaders at the time, it was absolutely incredible. I'm just looking now. Um, from he made he played 61 minutes against Huddersfield in yeah. Ivic's final game, and then he played. He started against Norwich, and then he played one, two, three, four, five games in a row, full five games. Um, he come off against Stoke. So he played 73 minutes against Stoke away. And I think that was because he picked up a yellow card. And then... He, I love the yellow card. Oh, he does. <laughs> he played every game then till Derby, where he was on the bench. It was the Derby home game, Ben. That oh, OK, to. yeah. And then he played 90 minutes from that game, every game until... Brentford, and then he was on the bench against Swansea. So the fact that he come in and he's just been an absolute rock. So I'd love to be different, ladies and gentlemen, and I'd love to mix it up, but you just cannot. There is a reason that he's dominated these votes. Um, so Sierra Elsa wins that by country mile. But obviously, as we've said, honourable mentions to all the others. Saar, absolutely class. Don't forget, we had to make sure that nobody voted for Saar in this one because I would have thought yeah. he'd, he'd have run away with a vote. Uh, Backman as well. I don't know how old he is. Is he like 25, 26? Um, yeah. Maybe can't class him as a young player, but uh, he certainly deserves an honourable mention and he's been absolutely superb as well. Um, before we go to the next category... Uh, we're going to mix things up like we did last time. Uh, if anyone remembers the Christmas special podcast, we actually did a quiz uh, where we, me and Ben sort of tested each other's knowledge. Um, Ben's questions were very, very good. So I maybe sold him a bit short by asking for <laughs> like the last like five Spanish players to play for Watford. So, yeah, I do apologise about that. But before the last two categories, which are individual performance and player of the season, uh, we are going to uh, we are going to have a, a quiz with each other. I have got off lightly here. I didn't prepare a quiz, which is poor from me. But because James can't make it, I've nicked James's quiz, um, and I'm pretty sure I know the answer. So I'll know if you've got it right or not, Ben. But yeah, Ben, you've you've got a quiz. So uh, when you're ready, the floor is yours. Brilliant. So welcome to the Voices of Vic Tenable Special. Um, <laughs> With the host Ben Ayton and my guest Mike Duffy. Mike, thanks for joining me. Um, how sitting are you doing? Down, sitting down there, you look about as tall as Warwick Davis because he uh, he <laughs> hosts it. <down> I'm <laughs> higher than you. Yeah, exactly. Camera. Yeah, uh, but yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm very good, mate. I'm very. I'm looking good. forward to this. So I feel I'm feeling confident, Ben. So uh, yeah. Yeah, I think you did all right last time around. We did this quiz as well. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how you get on. I think if anything, I think this is a little bit easier than last time. So and I want to see what your knowledge yeah. is like of Watford from like the last. 11 seasons so let's have a look um, <laughs> no pressure then yeah because this is an awards um our voices oh, of a big no. awards ceremony let's let's just keep it simple let's go for the last 10 players to win the Watford player of the season awards I'll help you out um there wasn't an awards se- season last year because of COVID so there wasn't a- an award um I don't think they'd have been able to give any out after being relegated. I always think that. It's got to be a bit know, awkward. It's a bit weird, it? isn't it? So, I've, so we've had one this season and then the one after is 18, 19 season. It goes down to 2010 and 11 season. So okay. I've got the list here. So, and I, All right, I'll help you out with one. Um, one player has appeared on this list twice. Yeah, I, I thought that. Um, do, does the... Player of the season from this season count as an answer. Yeah, or... it counts as well. Yeah, I Ishmael, hope you know about one. Ishmael Asar. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay, boom. We 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 cooking with we're gas here. We're rolling start. We're on a, we're on a roll. Uh, I think the bloke that got it twice um, was Danny Graham. One of them. He was. He didn't win it twice, but he did win it in 2010 and 11 yeah. season. So that's twice. another one down. Oh, he won it twice. Um, Troy Deeney's got to have won it. 
Troy Dini is the man who's won it twice. I can't believe you you've missed that one out. <laughs> I didn't miss it out. The you talk about him, I thought you'd know everything. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, he won yeah. it in 2014, 15 and 2013, 14 seasons. So I think that was a back-to-back seasons where he got hit 20 goals in the championship. Yeah, I think he got 25 or 24 goals in 13, 14 under Sonino. Uh, and then got 21 goals in the promotion season. It's um, a good start. You've got four out of ten so far. Uh, I'm feeling pretty confident. The first season back in the Prem, 15-16. Big Sebi Prodel. Yeah, how could you not forget that one? What what a dominant um, performance from him. I think he's still got Zlatan in pre Pavic in the back pocket still. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was That's easier than said than done. I can't say for him, Pavic. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you know what? The, the the tough one will be the Mazzari season because, again, that we, we finished 17th that season. I don't think we were in any danger of actually going down towards the end of it. It would have taken an almighty Hall win to do so. But I just never remember anyone sort of really standing out that season. Um, so 16, 17, do you know what? I'm going to go Horelio Gomez, hoping that he he ticks a list somewhere. He, he, he does tick a list. Um, he's yeah. not that season. He won the 15, 16 season. So I think, is that the season we got promoted? That was the season we got promoted. So yeah, Sebi so Prodel went, must have been 16, 17, surely. Yeah, and then you've got, yeah, you've got the Missouri one to list still. And then you've got the one who won it under Javi Gracia and Marco Silva season, the 18, 19 season. Was Missouri not 16, 17? I'm sure Mazzari, he was. Uh, sixteen seventeen was Kiko Sanchez Florist. Um, Mazzari was seventeen eighteen season. Okay, okay. Um, Christ, that's going to be a tough one. That really is. Um, also, I've still got eleven twelve, haven't I, to to pick uh, two thousand eleven yeah. twelve. I'm pretty sure eleven twelve. That was the first... six out of ten so far. That was the first, that was Deutsch's last season and we got our highest championship finish in, in quite a while. Um, I want to say this player, but I'm pretty sure he probably would have fell into the young player of the season if we'd have done it. Um, was Sean Murray 11-12? Because that was sort of his breakthrough season. No, he wasn't. Um, it is a player who, I'll give you a clue, he's a player <laughs> who, he, he left the club last season. He left our club last season. Yeah. Uh, um, so he was with us in the Premiership last year. Adrian Mariapa then. Yeah, he won it in 2011 12 season. Happy days. Happy days. I, I still haven't got 2012 so We're looking season, for 2012 13. Um, that was a season where the Pozos came in for the first yeah. time round. And then we've got 2017 18. That's under Walter Mazzari. And then 2020, 18, 19 season, which was Marco Silva at the start of the season, and Javi Gracia finished the season, and we had our FA Cup final that season. So, Pozzo's first season, I'm going to go with, and there's p- probably people screaming the answer at their phone or whatever they're listening <laughs> to, I'm going to go with Manuel Almunia? No. Ah, You'll be kicking yourself. Once I, once will, I yeah. say who it is, you're going to go, no, 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 no. Um, I feel like it's... Oh, is it Matty Vidra? No, it's not Matty what? Vidra, but he could be... He, he might have got the plane over with him. Not not Poo, though. No, not, not from Czech Republic, from Indonesia. Oh, I'm an Abdi. Yes, I'm an Abdi. Only had to go Can't through the old that. squad list. Um, <laughs> I'm an Abdi, of course. Yeah, I know. I thought that when he was like, because they're both Czech, and all right, so that's why. Right, so you've that. got two seasons left to get. Um, do you want so a clue? Ma- yeah, that Matt Zari season. I'm going to need a clue, mate, because that's Matt Zari season um, midfielder. Oh Jesus, um, Kapu? No, but he won eighteen nineteen season. Etienne Happy Kapu. Nice. So maybe think about his partner in midfield that season in seventeen. Oh, um, Valen Barame. No. <laughs> no, not Decore, was it? Uh, Abdelo Decore. I, Do you not remember the end of the you. season when he was on the pitch and he was singing his song back to the fans in the rookery? Ah, of course, yeah. I always thought that was, just... oh, hey, oh. <laughs> he, that was the season that he came on as a sub against Southampton. 
And like we were very close to loaning him out because he wasn't part of the plans. And then he obviously become like one of our better midfielders. So that's why yeah. I wasn't thinking him straight away. What a player so, he was. I, I saw him in a pre-season friendly against Stevenage and you just knew he had something about it. The engine he had, you could see he was box to box in that game and he was just oozed class and he was so much better than everyone else that day. Yeah. Well, that's... Uh... I saw him in a... I got in a lift with him um, at Hemel Shopping Centre. He, he got into the lift with me. I was like, why are you shopping in Hemel? <laughs> <laughs> that is very odd. Um, really, yeah, yeah. What was he shopping in Hemel for? Um, Berkham said you can understand because uh, I've been up there a couple of times with you, mate, and like I'm there in awe. I'm like, bloody hell. Like, I've never seen so many bloody Range Rovers in the high street just parked up. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, that's so. Is that all of them? I've got all of them. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. got ten out of Super. ten. You passed with flying colours. So. Made that hard work, didn't I? But we uh, we hope you guys enjoyed that quiz. As I said, there is another quiz coming towards the end. James has uh, very kindly sent over his quiz, which may I add, Ben, he has also put the answers in. So make sure you don't look at those because it will be too looked easy. At my phone that's no, good. Um, <laughs> so well, yeah, I'll be sure, on there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, there, I'm sure there were people screaming along to that quiz um, and probably thinking, "How could you forget certain players?" Uh, people but, yeah. still shouting Alman Abdi. <laughs> I can't believe I, I've I completely forgot, man. Like he's just, I think it's because he's disappeared. But yeah, uh, yeah. Not, not my uh, not my brightest hour. Let's say that. Um, Going back to the awards, uh, like I said, we've got two final categories to to discuss with yourselves. Now, the first one is individual performance of the season. And again, there was some very, very you know, good, good examples of this. Now, the winner with uh, with well, the winner for this was Saar against Reading. Um, I mean, it's hard to look past that one, but there have been some other brilliant ones. You know, the Caroline here says Sars two world-class goals, one with each feet against Reading. And that that's a good point as well. Uh, I think I remember, funnily enough, James, on, when he was watching his watch-along, he said the fact that that first Sar goal, he's done that with his weaker foot. Weaker foot. Um, and then the second one was just sheer power as well. Uh, Mike Smart said La Roca versus Reading, if for those that don't know, La Roca is Carlos Sanchez. Just because all my other answers have been so predictable, but Carlos really sealed the deal that way. Um, totally suff- snuffed out Reading's danger. Completely agree. I think Cathcart, when he came on that game as well, was superb. Peter Smith said Chalabar against Cardiff, season defining game slash result. Peter Elson, Clevs versus Norwich away. My brother, Cameron Smart, Saar versus Bristol City or Backman versus Oxford. Uh, don't forget, Daniel Backman saved all three penalties in the Carabao Cup tie in the, the win on penalties against Oxford. Uh, just a shame we went crashing out to Newport the next round as, as we love doing in the Carabao Cup. I don't know what it is about that cup, but we just do not like playing in that. Funnily enough, the best run I can seem to remember most recently was the season we went down. Last season, we, we I think we got like... We beat Swansea, we beat Coventry, um, and then we lost to Everton. So I think that's actually the furthest we've got in that cup for quite some time. Uh, I think you have to cash your minds back to 2004 when it was the Carling Cup or the League Cup. Yeah, we got to um, the semis against Liverpool. Liverpool, yeah. I remember my old man went there. He, he never took me to any of those games because I was, I was too young, so... I would have had school or whatever the next day. Um, Dave Morris, it's hard to go against Saar, uh, against Reading, but I think Chalaber against Cardiff away was immense, as well as what a goal to go with it. Jason, WF, uh, Watford FC Finland has said, he's, he's named a few here, Saar versus Bristol at home, Chalaber versus Birmingham at home was, were memorable. Also, Hughes versus Barnsley at home was man of the match performance in his first league start of the season. I think Hughes was... Uh, yeah, Hughes has, has been brilliant. Uh, George White, a regular listener, Chalabra away at Cardiff, and then Mikey Abrahams, Saar against Reading, big standout in a game as a team we didn't play well in, two individual goals which gave us a win. His performance against Bristol City was unreal, but that was part of a great team performance. So Saar, the eventual winner with uh, for, for the individual performance. Ben, are you going with Saar? Are you going to be different? You're going to go elsewhere? What are you thinking on this one, mate? I'm on the fence here. Um, I'm stuck between two. I'm stuck between the Chalaber performance at Cardiff City and I'm stuck between the Saar against Reading. I think both were equally as important. I think Chalaber, that's his first game he had the captain's armband as well. 
So, and we've heard Troy Deeney speak saying that that armbands helped raise everyone's game this season. And it really did in that case for Chalobah because he was phenomenal. But I think Saw, I think he just took the game by the scruff of his neck and he just created two goals out of absolutely nothing Mm -hmm. and won us a game. And if they didn't go in, Reading would have won that because they was all over us. We struggled to... We normally have con- control in matches, but I felt like we didn't have much of a control against Reading because Reading were, they just kept coming. There was attack after attack, and it, if it weren't for Batman or their poor shooting, they could have easily won that game. So I'm going to probably say it's going to be Sars performance against Reading because they didn't know how to deal with him. I think mm-hmm. that left back who came in for the day, it wasn't normally their left back, was he? No. So, and they gave him an absolute nightmare. And you know, so against any left back in the championship, he's got them on toast all day long. But for a reserve player to come in out of nowhere and try and play against this man, Asar, you got no chance. And Saar sniffed the weakness there. And yeah, fair play to him. Two quality goals, two different feet. Yeah, it has to be his man, Asar, for me. What about you? Uh, I'm actually going to go different. Although what you've just said on both fronts, Saar against Reading and Chalabar against Cardiff, both brilliant standout performances. Yeah. I'm going to go Chalabar, but I'm going to go Chalabar against Birmingham. I don't know why. I don't know whether it's because he got a goal as well. I mean, he got a goal in the, the Cardiff game, but he was captain for that as well, I think he was. Yeah. Um, and I just thought that was another game where we perhaps weren't at our best, but we managed to stick three plus blues, which was brilliant from my point of view. Um, but I just thought that he, he was he was brilliant that game. And I, I, I'm going to be different and go Chalabra against yeah. Birmingham. Uh, I, I know um, somebody else mentioned it in, uh, I think it was um, one of the comments I just read out. But yeah, I'm going to be different and go Chalabra against Birmingham, which uh, which actually means if we take in um, the, the last, convers- if we take in the last comment as a, um, actual vote. So Jason Watford Finland said uh, Chalaba versus Birmingham were memorable. Um, if we're taking that as a vote, it actually means that Saar has only just won the vote on that one uh, because I'm also going Chalaba against Birmingham. But one yeah, that I mean, surprised me though that hasn't been mentioned at all, and it was a massive performance of the season was Ben Foster at home against Blackburn Rovers. Yeah. Absolutely incredible between the sticks that day. Penalty save against Adam Armstrong as well. But it was save after a save. It's similar to a Reading game. Um, it was just attack after attack, and we just managed to be good enough up the other end of the, uh, up, up the other end that day. If we didn't, then we could have been in serious trouble because that was at the time of the season when Blackburn looked to threat, and you thought they could get playoffs here, or they could even go one better and get automatic because mm-hmm. that point of the season, Adam Armstrong was scoring goals for fun, and they looked a really good side at the start of the season. I know it tailed off for them, but yeah, Ben Foster against. Um, Blackburn Rovers. I'm surprised no one's actually picked that one up. Yeah, and you've just reminded me, we, we did have a, a, another one which I've not mentioned here, but um, yeah, I mean, that was one of the most uncomfortable, unconvincing 3-1 wins I think I've ever watched. Like We made real hard work of that and, yeah. you know, Adam Armstrong's gone on to get 28 goals this season. Uh, only Ivan Tony with 30 has got more. I don't know if he scored in the last game of the season, but um, he may have got 30, 32, I don't know. But he got 31 at the end. 31, so I mean, that's incredible that he's... Uh, but yeah, he, he, that is a very, very good shout. Uh, the other one I've, I, I missed, uh, sorry to Steve D here. Um, he said, individual performance of the year. I'm going with Troy Deeney against Stoke. Huge win and stepped up massively. That was one of the games where we saw Troy sort of drop deeper and he wasn't playing up front as such. And I yeah. mean, he played Saar through for his goal. Um, that obviously suited him, didn't a penalty. It, him, dropping a bit deeper. Um, That's and when we saw... Four played a bit further forward, and yeah, the, the partnership of them two actually worked that game. Um yeah, I think that's when we thought, OK, if Troy's going to have a, a part of this season, let's play him a bit deeper. Let's play him in that role because he done well. Unfortunately, he didn't quite materialise like that. But um, yeah, that, that's a, a very, very good good shout on that, uh, on that one, Steve. But yeah, Saar versus Reading, the eventual winner. I can't say I'm massively surprised, but as I keep saying, it's great to have all these different types of performances that are being mentioned because it's absolutely brilliant um, and it just highlights the, the the team unity this season as well that we've had so many and no one's run away with it like I says Sarah against Reading's only just won the voting uh, from our listeners and then the last category of the Voices of the Vic Awards uh, podcast before we go on to before we finish on a quiz is player of the season no other than player of the season and um, 
it looks like, Ben, we're actually going to have to have the deciding vote because oh. Sa and Kiko are both tied. So just to read out some of the um, just to read out some of the, the tweets that we've got here. Um, and I think Mike Smart's pretty much summed up what we've been saying all along in this podcast. So many candidates. Isn't it wonderful? But the one who stands out for me being great from start to finish, even when we were poor in the first half of the season, is Kiko. Peter Elson says, Sa. Without his quality, we wouldn't have been promoted. Catherine Jones says, I have my rose-tinted glasses on and love all of them, even the crap ones she put in brackets. Um, Steve, yeah, yeah. Steve D said, player of the season, player of the year, it's boring, but it's sar. Simply without him, there is not promotion. Cameron Smart said, Kiko, James, I know it's generic answer, but I have to say sar. Peter Smith, Kiko, can only remember one game, one off game, unfortunately, just up the M1. I'd agree with that. Um, Saar wouldn't have been able to do what he did without Kiko. That is a very, very good point, Peter. Uh, And I'm sure something you might allude on in a minute, Ben, not to give anything away. Um, And then Paul Cook also mentioned um, uh, one which we didn't quite think, to be honest, but he said, truce to Kong. If it's true, he inspired the meeting where the players thrashed out their differences and brought into the team. Uh, So a real array of votes there, Ben. Um, is Sarah it actually Kiko. tied before between Saar and Kiko? It's, it, uh, from our listeners, it is currently neck and neck between Saar and Kiko. So wow. you've got a chance to put one of them in front, or you've got a chance to bring somebody new to the board. Who, who, who are you going, Ben? Well, I think you're going to end up having a deciding vote on this uh-huh. because I actually voted for Tom Cleverley. Um, I thought Tom Cleverley was outstanding this season and his work rate, it kind of set the tone for games in the season and he kind of took the game from the scruff of the neck and kind of get got the ball rolling. And under Ivic, he he seemed like he played a massive, important part of that side. And then when Cisco came in, he took his game to up another level and I didn't... I didn't really expect it from Tom Cleverley. Like, we all know how good he is, but I thought he just took it up another gear and he was just outstanding. And, like, Tom Cleverley, you know what you get from him, but he just, he was incredible. With the captain armband as well, um, like Troy said, the leadership from Tom Cleverley, yeah. you can't fault it. If if Troy was to leave a club tomorrow, you'd want Tom Cleverley probably to captain them in the Premiership. Premier League because you know what you're going to get yeah. um, important goals this season as well from Tom Cleverley um, I thought I think he got four goals at the end of this season and he the last few seasons he's been a bit of a bit part player not because of selection probably because of injury problems he's had over the years but this season he's played consistently he had a little niggly injury that he picked up against Wickham and was out for about four weeks but after that got back into the side and it's been phenomenal so my personal vote would have gone for Tom Cleverley I don't know who's going to win it I think I know who's going to win this because I know who you voted for your player of the season um, but you can't really separate Saar and Kiko and like one of our listeners has said Saar wouldn't have done as well as he, he has done in, in the in the championship if it wasn't for Kiko. Yeah. If them two weren't linking up like they did down on right-hand side, the, the delivery Saar would have had would have been limited. Um, maybe Nagakia would have done well as well to help him out, but I don't think he would have been as consistent as Kiko. Um, so, yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, over to you, Mike. Who are you <laughs> voting for yeah, as the no. voices of a Vic player of the season. No pressure. I mean, just want to say everything you've said about Tom Cleverley is absolutely spot on. He's, he, and I, the thing I liked was he did an interview. I don't know whether it was halfway through the season or at the start of the season or whatnot. He said, we were the players that got us down. So we want to be the players that bring them back up and bring Watford back into the Premier League where they belong. And he just gets the club. You know, he's been here before as a youngster, 2008, I think it was. Uh, and he was brilliant in that first loan spell. Uh, and he, he gets the club. He gets Watford. He, he loves the club. So he's um, he's been absolutely superb. So honourable mention to him. Um, but- he just comes across as a, a lovely guy and he just cares about his club. Like He obviously grew up around Manchester because he came through the Manchester United Academy. But... The moment he came here on loan, for this club's captured his heart. And when he heard Watford were interested in him, when he was at Everton, was it? He just knew yeah. Watford was a place for him and he wanted to come back. And for him to say that we were the players that got us relegated, 
we're going to take us back up. Mm-hmm. Full respect to him because. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, look, look, we interviewed Chris Stark earlier, and he alluded to. I'm not going to say too much, but the start of the season, a bit of a chaos where there was players in the stands. They didn't know if they was moving on. They didn't know if they were staying. But Tom Clevy was like one of the guys who was like, I'm staying here. I'm getting this club back up into the Premier League where they deserve to be. And you tats off to them and full respect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and he's he's very, very, like, he's he's right in his name. He's almost a, would you say he's a Watford legend or is that too much of a step too far? Um, oh, it's hard to define a legend, isn't it? It's, it's hard to define them because you look at records as well, don't you? And you go, how many goals they scored, how many appearances. But for him, he's played a lot of games for Watford. Um, if He's just played a massive part in Watford's history by getting us promoted in the COVID season where players, where fans weren't able to attend. So, and he caps in the side for probably more games than Troy this season, probably more than Chalaba. So he's probably the captain who's taken us back up to the Premier League. So in my eyes, he's a Watford legend. Um, but you define it however you like, don't you? You do, yeah. It's uh, it's different. I mean, you know, as I say, he's he's been brilliant. I, I've I've got no qualms about him. And I think the thing as well that that I think he's different when he plays for Watford. I'm not for one minute saying he doesn't try when he plays for the teams, but um, as, as you, as people know, we've, you know, been from Birmingham and that I've got a lot of Aston Villa supporting friends. And every time I talk about Tom Cleverley, um, cause he, he had a spell at Aston Villa and he, they say, oh, all he does is he, he passes sidewards, he passes back. And he's I'm more thinking than that. he's more than that. Okay. He might pass sideways. He might pass back. I've not seen, we, we've spoke about this. I, I, I'm sorry, we're going off on a bit of a tangent here, but um, I, I'm doing it for one reason. Well, I'm doing it for two reasons. One, because Tom Cleverly You're doesn't delaying who you have to pick. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. De- I'm delaying that because James has just messaged me saying that the power's back on, so he's going to come back and do his quiz. Um, oh, but, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, uh, in all seriousness, like the, the engine he's got on him, for a player of his age, he's someone you'd associate, like his engine you'd associate on a young uh, player that's just come through the youth team wants to impress chasing every last course down was it Huddersfield at home I think we won because he chased down the ball and that's yeah, going to keep his feet didn't he yeah so like stuff like that I mean his performance against Norwich as well that we've we've discussed he's been absolutely brilliant and you know when when Villa fans say that to me I mean look he, he might not have done that for Villa but I just think I can't believe we're talking about the same player here um, and just as uh, just as I've hey. finished up on um, just as I've finished up talking about Tom Cleverly, for those that are listening and not watching on YouTube, the massive cheer in the background was from Ben because we are actually now joined <laughs> by James from the Watford Way. Mate, we've just finished the player of the season segment, which is the last segment of the show before the quiz. Um what I'll do is I'll quickly go through and ask for your uh, for, for your votes on, for, for your votes on each category, James. But um, mm-hmm. how are you bef- before before all that? Power's <laughs> back on. You've been. Uh, How's it you to join on? us, James? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I sent you boys a message to the group chat, expecting the power to to come on around like t- two or three p.m. But but we're here. Um, you know, I knew I knew I'd make it in the end, and yeah, and I'm just I'm just glad to be on because because yeah, I didn't want to be stuck in a cold house all day doing doing not a lot really. So yeah, great. Did you not to be on. Did you kick candles, the fuse huh? box? <laughs> What's that, Ben? Did you kick the fuse box and it started working? No, no, the fuse box was fine. I went out to that and that was fine, but it, it looked like it was a wider issue than, than just my street. So, yeah, I'm on, I'm here, and I'm ready to give you my, my player of the season votes. I, I tell you what, James, who, whoever it was, that, that company that said it'll be around 2, 3 p.m., I know you've been looking for work recently. You want to give them a call, mate? I'll tell you what, you've got the power back on before <laughs> then. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, um, we were just finishing up on the, the, the player of the season. So, James, I'm just going to quickly run through each category, and if you can just sure. give me your vote and then a little bit of a reason as to why. Um, so, performance of the season. Um, Norwich away was the winner um, for from the listeners. Uh, so, who? What was your performance of the season this season, James? Oh, for me, I mean, it's got to be the six 0 at home to, to Bristol City. I mean, the Norwich away performance, obviously, the, the class of opposition we were playing, I, I thought that was a fantastic performance. But 
you know, for a turning point in our season, when we when the team really started to to play well, I think it was a six, definitely a six 0 at, at, at home to Bristol. Saar, I think, got what two goals, three assists that day. That's really when he came alive as well. So for me, definitely the six 0 at home to to Bristol City. Goal of the season. Goal of the season for me, João Pedro away at Derby. Fantastic strike. Um, ben Wall made a really good run actually to open up the space for João Pedro that day, and yeah, fantastic goal. I don't, I don't know what you guys voted for, but but João Pedro against Derby for me. Ben uh, said, "I voted Jean... the same as you, um, J- James. I just thought it was fantastic for someone so young, and for him to open up his body and bang that in the top corner. It was sheer class. That's what you expect from like." someone who's playing in his prime of his career, but for him to do it 19 years of age, doesn't know a word of English, came over from Brazil and to play against his boyhood idol of Wayne Rooney. It, it was of course, of course. It was dreams, wasn't it? Dreams what he could have ever, ever dreamed of. It was, it was fantastic. But uh, who actually, it was Messina who actually won this category in the end, um, yeah. James. It was, do you I see? Can, oh, get against Cardiff, against Cardiff. Well, I you think know it what? was... I, what, I, for the sheer uh, significance of the goal, I think. Yeah, I think so. Because the actual quality of the goal, you know, the goalkeeper probably should have saved that free kick. But I think, yeah, as, as you say, for the significance of the moment in the season, the promotion running, um, you know, I'd, I'd have Messina there as well. So Messina second then, and then Jean Pedro against Derby first for me. Good stuff. Young player of the season. The winner was Sierra Elta. Well, this is a bit of a controversial one for me because I saw people on the voices of the Vic Twitter saying, does Sirelta count as a young player? Yeah. Um, so he's, he's 24 years old, isn't he, Mike? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does he count as a young player for me? So for me, I'm not going to count him as my young player of the season. Okay. Fantastic signing, probably in the running for player of the season outright. Mm-hmm. Um, but my young player of the season has got to be, uh, it's got to be Jean Pedro, 19 years old, as Ben said, come from Brazil, um, you know, fantastic. I mean, towards the end of the season, he wasn't really firing on, on all cylinders. He was, he was stuck in that nine goal mark for, for quite a while. Um, but yeah, it's got to be Jean Pedro, hasn't it? And, you know, with, with the news that that his, it looks like he's signed a new long term contract at Watford. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, really, really delighted with that. And yeah, Jean Pedro definitely is my young player of the season. Good stuff. Individual performance of the season. The winner was Saar against Reading. I think, again, not the greatest of games in terms of the overall performance, but for Saar to score those two massive goals so early on and win the game for us, I think that's why he's won. But uh, are you are you booking the trend or are you going with Saar against Reading? Oh, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. Two goals of sheer quality. The first one, um, especially, I, I thought was fantastic. And, and the second one, the angle that, that he managed to score from was, was absolutely fantastic. And again, like the Norwich game, um, you know, Reading were fighting for promotion as well. Really, really good opposition. A game that Watford needed to win and Saar pulls them two goals out of the bag. So, yeah, absolutely agree with that. Um, Saar against Reading would be my individual performance of the season. Uh, and then I've just realised I've not even voted for player of the season yet, have I? I've not given mine. No, you, uh, we, you, we, we were, we were if you didn't yeah. want to do it. <laughs> we, we were lauding, we were praising Tom Cleverly to the high heavens. My player of the season, which I voted on the actual Watford website as well, is Kiko Femenia. I think um, Mike Smart uh, mentioned it in a, a tweet, which we just read out. The fact that he's been so consistent, even when we were so poor, uh, and, you know, if you think the, the link-up play, the understanding he's got with Ishmael Asar, I think everything on a whole just points to to, uh, to Kiko for me. So, as it stands, James, you won't have heard this. From our listeners, it was tied between Saar and Kiko were both on the same vote. With me now going Kiko, Kiko is winning player of the season. Are you going to level it up for Saar? Are you going to extend the victory for Kiko? Or... Like Ben, are you going to go different and not mention either of those two? Who is your player of the season? No pressure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on my shoulders now. Uh, okay, so my player of the season is is Myla Saar because, because of the goals he scored. The, the and, 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 you know, the goals he scored were, were in really, really crucial games. And actually, if there was a joint player of the season... Kiko and Saar, their partnership down that right-hand side. Of course, they've they've both been absolutely fantastic. And, and you know, when the, when the club did, did theirs, it was Saar, um, 
Kiko and um, and Sirielta in in the top three for player of the season. So look, any any three of them probably could have won. Um, but you know, star thirteen goals, four assists. Some of the goals fantastic. Um, you know. One of the matches that, that needed to be won when, when maybe the, the overall performance wasn't great. So it's got to be as Myla Sarr, but I absolutely understand why why people may have gone for Serialta or Kiko. But for me, yeah. it's got to be Sarr. So there you know we what, have boys, it. The back player back. of the season's tied. Yeah, but I, I think there's a way to decide this. Go on, then. I'm going to flip a coin. <laughs> Come on. Head is Ismail Sarr. Tails oh, wow. is Kiko. Oh, and I wow. think we have to... Queen Elizabeth is going to decide for fate. That's fair, ain't it? Yes. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, yeah. people will be listening thinking, what the fuck is going on? What voices <laughs> of the Vic resort? Just flipped a coin to see yeah, who yeah. wins the play of a season. Flip the coin, Jesus. <laughs> um, so we'll, put, star, we'll put the top Kiko, three out. Yeah. We'll put the top three out. Like we'll put the because we've had we've had we've had ah, we've had four votes. Okay, yeah, go flip the coin. Go heads is Sar uh, and then tails is Kiko. I can't right, believe you've got re- reserted to <laughs> <laughs> oh god we'll reveal it next week I'm voicing <laughs> for those that for those that are listening that's heads and I that's forgot heads. what I said heads was was that Ismail Asar yeah Ismail Asar is your voice of the big player of the season <laughs> well there we have it ladies and gentlemen voices of the big player of the season uh, decided by the flip of a coin in Hemel Hempstead from Ben Ayton um, is Ishmael Asar. Uh, it just I mean, shows the quality of this podcast that we've just had the <laughs> side by flipping a coin. You know what? We we could do it more officially by putting a poll out on Twitter with with all with all three um, you know serial to Sarah and Kiko. That would be too professional for Voices of the Vic. <laughs> <laughs> a coin flip is about the right thing for Voices <laughs> of the Vic, I think. Um, but yeah, no, listen, I mean, the, the fact that it was so close, it, it just goes to show they've been absolutely class. I think everyone that's been mentioned, uh, and James, we were saying, Truce to Kong even got a vote from our one of our listeners. So it just goes to show the sheer quality we've got throughout this squad. Uh, and it, it, it's, you know, thoroughly deserved. And we'll be tweeting graphics. Ben will be putting some... Uh, wonderful graphics together of who's won each category of our awards podcast uh, and James you, uh, you've you you've come back at the right time because we did Ben's quiz earlier which I passed with flying colours just about although I couldn't remember that Alman Abdi won player of the season in 2012-13 Ben had to give me a bit of a nudge on that one so I'm a bit disappointed with that uh, and I, I thought it was Danny Graham that won it twice not Troy Deeney um, and again I'm a self-proclaimed massive Troy Deeney fan suppose um, but yeah, James, you've uh, you've you've put a quiz together. Uh, I was saying to the listeners early on, I've not put a quiz together. So if you want to alter, alternate the questions between myself and Ben, uh, and uh, and we'll finish off with uh, with your quiz. So James, the floor is yours. Has he had a power cut? Yeah, has he had a power cut? He's uh, he's he's froze on screen here, so. Uh, he didn't want to do but, uh, his quiz, did he? Yeah, he's uh, he's come back at the uh, at the wrong time. Maybe this is him going. I don't want to appear in voices of the Vic. If he's just him play of a season with a flip of a coin, I'm out. Maybe uh, the, he's just. In fact, he's just messaged to say that the power has gone again. Oh shit! The power yeah. again. Yeah, the power's gone. I thought he was just pondering whether to do it for a long, long time. Uh, so those on visuals will uh, will get a nice view of James. He's James' That's a lovely thoughtful still photo, face, isn't it? Yeah, that's a lovely part. That should be his Facebook profile yeah. picture. <laughs> Will we take a picture and send it to him and get him to do it? I'll tell you what, I'll print screen it right now. Oh, he's gone. He's gone oh, it just before, oh. just before. So those on those that are watching on YouTube will uh, know what we're referring to. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll tell you what I'll do. I will ask the questions to you, Ben. Uh, let's do that. Let's hope he's not he's not deleted it. That's all good. So, Ben, question time. Yeah, ready. As you as you both know, Adi Nagalo is James's favourite ever player. But how many goals and assists combined did he get in the 2015-16 season? It's multiple choice. So did he A, 17, B, 18, or C, 19? Oh, um, oh this... <laughs> <laughs> you can make this up. Hang on, I've just got to take a delivery one sec. Oh, brilliant. You could not make this up. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> uh, brilliant. 
<laughs> you can tell I've got a ring doorbell. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> miss it, it's ordering H&M clothing. Uh, <laughs> um, right, um, so, can you go through the Mark yeah, of course. choice again? So, the Adi Nagalo, how many goals and assists combined did he get in 2015-16 season? Is it A-17, B-18 or C-19? I'm going to go 17. Incorrect, I'm afraid. It's 18. Adiani Garlo got 15 goals and three assists in the 2015-16 season. 15 a good start, goals then. is quality yeah. return for a first first year in the Prem, was it? It was, yeah. Wow. It was very, very good. Very good. Um, Watford are well known for wearing yellow and black kits under the nickname The Hornets. But what kit colour did Watford wear between the years 1927 and 1959? Is it A, red, B, green or C, blue? It was blue, wasn't it? It was indeed. Blue kits, we were known as the Brewers, I think it was. They used to play at Casterbury, didn't they, as well? Yeah, Casterbury Park, I think, yeah. Was we called Watford Rovers at one point as well? We was, we was. I think that's when we were called the the Brewers. Um, So, yeah, very good. You would have loved that one. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'd have been every week, mate. Um, next question. Jose Holobas was renowned for picking up yellow cards during his time at Watford, but who picked up the most this season? Is it A, Francesco Sierra B, Will Hughes, or C, Nathaniel Chalaba? It would have been close between Serie Alta and Chalaba, but... It would have. But it was. <laughs> Because I've done the stats for the podcast and yellow cards, I think I know this. I think if Serie A played for the whole of a season, it would have been him, but I think it's Chalaba. It is Chalaba. Chalaba's got yeah. 12 yellow cards this season. I don't know how many Serie A's got. I want to say about eight or nine, uh, maybe even 10. I don't know. Uh, probably should have looked that up. Um, so, yeah, two questions correct. The next question is the cycling GK Ben Foster has provided some great content on YouTube this season, but as of today, the 13th of May, which video has the most views? Is it A, the Manchester United FA Cup away game, B, Swansea City away game, or C, Wickham Wanderers away game? Now, if you've watched the most recent one, you will know the answer to this if you are listening carefully. Uh, I've not watched the most recent one. Is that the one with Elton John in? Um, the most recent one's got Elton John in, um, yeah. but that's um, that's not one of the answers. Okay, yeah, no, I've only watched half of that one, so I probably ah, should right, yeah. all to get the answer. Um, I'm going to go for Swansea away only because of the whole GoPro in the back of a net and it was causing a bit of controversy, wasn't it? So, it was lots indeed. Of fans wanted to see that, so I'm going to go with that. And you would be correct to do so because Swansea City away is the correct answer. 1.3 million views wow. it got like that that's is incredible mad. um that's not our listeners <laughs> yeah exactly he's <laughs> almost caught up with our our stats there he's he's you'll get there one day ben you'll get there one yeah, day you'll get there, ben. <laughs> <laughs> joking of course um but yeah he um the the bit i'm alluding to is he got jamal Lowe on the gopro at the end of the game the other week and he goes here he is the big dog he goes you got me the most views he didn't seem quite chirpy then so uh, who had the last laugh? I found out the other day that Jamal Lowe actually played for Hemel Hempstead. Did he? Yeah, he oh, was. Wow. He, he came through the academy at Barnet, I think. And from Barnet, he had lots of loan spells around the local area. And Hemel Hempstead was one of them. And then he actually signed for them permanently. I think he only played about 15, 20 times for Hemel. But yeah, just shows that hard work and that you can graft and work your way up. And look at him now. Swansea playoffs, uh, plays for... Um, football for Jamaica now as well, doesn't yeah. he? And it's, it's just came so far. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you often see many scenarios of non-league to Premier League and to, to similar levels as well. Uh, you know, I remember when Kiefer Moore, he got a handful of goals this season. I remember when he played us against Yeovil uh, back when we, we went to Yeovil and did the, uh, the, two, the two trips that we had to do. And uh, I think they saw him from Dorchester Town uh, who were like Comfort South or something. So, yeah, it goes to show. And then James has, uh, James has followed traditions with Voices of the Big. So we usually get questions about Watford and everything. And then we get silly questions, which we love doing. James has followed suit here. British people love a good cup of tea, but which country invented tea? Is it A, Japan, B, China, or C, Thailand? 
I'm going to go Japan. Um, I think it's one of these, I was saying to you earlier, this is one of those questions that at the start of lockdown and we was all doing Zoom questions. It felt like this cropped up loads of times, but I'm stupid enough to not actually pay attention to know what the answer <laughs> is. So I've gone for Japan and I'm probably wrong. You are wrong, unfortunately, Ben. Um, <laughs> it is China. Uh, I wouldn't uh, have had a clue, to be uh, honest, mate. China makes sense because you have um, tea in China mugs. Ah, okay, yeah. Ah. Good thinking about it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that 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 was the quiz. So, Ben, out of the five questions, you got one, two, three correct. Three out of five, not bad. I'll you know, that, go yeah. over half. You'll take that. Um, but yeah, no. Listen, guys, it's been <laughs> it's been an absolutely crazy, crazy episode from deciding the player of the season by a flip of a coin to Ben getting H&M deliveries for his missus answering the door partway through the pod. Um, I was thinking about editing it all out, but Ben will keep it in, sod it. Um, and then to James um, coming back from the power cut to then being froze again. And yeah, it's, it's been crazy. I think that sort of sums up the season we've had. It's been up and down and up and down. So uh, we, we really, really do appreciate you guys listening. Um, other than the Chris Stark pod, which we we probably going to be putting out next week sometime. Um, so as you're listening to this on the Saturday, the 15th, I think the 15th is a Saturday. As you're listening to this on Saturday, 14th. the 15th. 14th? No, it's Thursday 15th. today. I don't Thursday even know what today, day. yeah. What day is it? It's Thursday today, so it's the 15th. So as you listen to this on the 15th of May, uh, it will probably be next week sometime that the Chris Start podcast will go out. But then I think myself and Ben will be having a, uh, a well-needed rest from, from podcasting and uh, we, we will, of course, reconvene at some stage towards the start of the season. I mean, the fixtures are released on the 16th of June, so we might do something like that. We, we might do a podcast on that. We might do a YouTube live. We might do an Instagram live. We, we, we don't know yet, but um, we, we just... As I say at the end of every podcast, like the numbers that we've pulled out this season, the numbers that were pulled out on the promotion winning podcast, like we sit here and like there's some of the guests 1. we've been. 1.3 million. Yeah, 1.3 million. Like it's that's, but no, we, we sit here and we, we sort of think like, wow, we've we've not even been here a year and the numbers we're pulling out and the support we've been receiving. We look, we wouldn't have been able to do this podcast today if, if you guys didn't interact with us because we've gone off your yeah. vote. So, yeah, we, we really want to thank everyone for listening. Uh, we hope you're enjoying the visual experience to it all as well. Uh, we're hopefully going to be sort of going down that route as well next season. Uh, but, yeah, thank you very, very much uh, from myself, Mike Duffy, and from my co-host, Ben Aiton. Enjoy the rest of your week. Uh, weird with Watford not playing now. I feel some a bit lost, to be honest. But enjoy the rest of your week. We hope you've enjoyed it. Let us know your thoughts. Stay safe and come on, you horns. <laughs>